Hi everyone. In this video, I'm going to introduce you to the concept of bonds, and specifically we're going to look at it from the bond issuer's perspective, the person that will owe money or have a bond payable on their books. So for starters, let's lay the groundwork. What exactly is a bond? Well, a bond is basically a debt instrument. It's a way for companies to raise money by borrowing it rather than selling ownership in their own company. Now, bonds can be issued by, as I said, companies, but they can also be issued by the government. They can be issued by private entities. And what makes these bonds so special, especially related to other forms of, of debt, like say a promissory note, note payable, what makes bonds unique is that they are traded on the open market. So by comparison, when you uh, uh, raise money by, say, signing a promissory note. That is, you make an agreement with another party that, hey, you're going to lend me this money. I'm going to pay you back. Here are the payment terms. Here's the interest. Let me sign my name to this contract that holds me to it. That's a promissory note. A bond has all the same characteristics of a promissory note in the sense of um, there will be a, a dollar amount that, 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 that you agree to pay that is what's known as the, the face value or the, uh, um, of the bond. Um, there will probably be an interest rate associated with that bond, um, known as the stated rate. Um, it will have some identifier of who is issuing the bond. In this case, it's the United States government. Um, what's going to be different about bonds is they aren't going to be a contract with just one other party in a one-on-one -on -one negotiation. What's going to happen is they're going to be mass produced by the company and they're going to be sold in the open market such that the holder of the bond, whoever that holder is, is the one entitled to receive the payments on that bond. The holder buys the bond from the company, pays the company money, that's where the lending occurs, and the holder is then entitled to receive a payout per the terms of the bond certificate at a later time. That's how they get paid back. Okay, so that's the big difference. They're traded in the open market rather than be, being one-on-one -on -one written contract negotiations. What are the characteristics of these bonds that are traded in the open market? Well, they're usually small denominations, typically multiples of $1,000. The reason you keep the denomination small is because it keeps your potential creditor pool large, right? It, the, the higher value a bond is, the less people that will be afford that, that will be able to afford to lend you that money, or the less people that might be willing to lend you that much money. So you keep the denomination down, you've got more people willing to give you money. Um, because they are traded in the open market, they are subject to economic forces and the time value of money. So remember, bonds are being issued in an open market where you've got other parties' bonds being traded, where you've got stocks being traded. Basically, your bond is going toe-to-toe -to -toe with every other option investors have at their disposal. And so with that being said, regardless of what your bond says it will pay, it does not mean that is what your bond is actually worth relative to everything else it's competing against in the open market. I'll talk more about that on the next couple of slides. Just know that as a result of these economic forces, your bond might be issued at its face value. In other words, investors might lend you, in the case of this picture here, $1,000 today for you to pay them some interest over time and then give them $1,000 back in the future. However, investors might, if your bond looks really attractive relative to the other options in the market, investors might actually overpay you. They might give you, in this case, say, $1,200 now for you to only pay them back 1000 in the future. And you might say, well, that's crazy. Why did an investor overpay? But remember, they're collecting interest along the way. And the only reason that they're going to do this is because you're giving them much more interest than, say, the alternative options they have. So by the, the, the idea of supply and demand, essentially demand for your bond will be so much higher than demand for other things in the market that people are willing to overpay to get it. Or you could have the opposite happen. Your bond may be unattractive. It may pay less interest than investors' alternatives. And when that's the case, investors won't be willing to give you that face value. They're going to give you less than that face value. And that's what's called a discount. All right. 
Bonds, just a couple of things to tie up before we get into more detail on these kind of uh, premium uh, discount face value ideas. Um, bonds may be secured by collateral or unsecured. Secured by collateral simply means that um, there is going to be an asset tied to the bond such that if the company fails to pay it off, the investor has the right, or I should say the creditor, really either way in an open market, um, the creditor has the right to uh, claim the asset, okay, in, in lieu of payment should the company fail to pay. If it's unsecured, that just means that the company fails to pay, then whoever holds that bond is out of luck. You don't get anything, sorry. Um, obviously, you can you can imagine that collateralized um, bonds will probably pay less interest because they're less risky than um, uncollateralized bonds, unsecured bonds. Um, they may be regular, convertible, or callable. What do these terms mean? I'll skip over regular for right now and just talk convertible. Convertible typically has an option attached to the bond that gives the holder of the bond the option to convert that bond to some sort of equity, some sort of stock. So if the if the if the holder decides, you know, I don't really want to be a creditor anymore, I don't want to be a debt holder, I'd rather be an owner, um, they can convert that bond to stock. Bonds can also be callable. So bonds are going to have a, a, a maturity period, a payback period, right? So say 10 years, 20 years, whatever. Callable bonds have the option for the issuer to at any time during that period say, hey, I want to go ahead and pay this off early. I don't want to keep paying you interest. I'm just going to give you the principal now. Um, if you don't have these features, then you're a regular bond. You're just a bond. You issue. You stick to the payment terms until maturity. Pay it off. All right. Let's get in more detail on this whole idea of time value of money, economic forces, and the premium or discount issuance. Um, bonds, because of being subject to economic forces, they're going to be issued at what's known as their market value. In other words, whatever investors are willing to pay based on the relative attractiveness compared to the other options available. That market value is established by calculating the present value of the future cash flows of the bond. Now, I'm keeping this introductory and high level in this video, so I'm not going to walk through the math that goes into a present value calculation. However, I will conceptually at least explain what goes on here. The investor first determines the amount of future cash flows that the bond will generate. So you might have a 10-year bond, $10,000 pays 10% interest per year. So when you think about the future cash flows, the future cash flows from that bond will be, well, a $10,000 principal payment at some point and 10 years worth of $100 payments, the interest that gets paid. So that's the future cash that the investor will collect from the bond. The investor will lay those cash flows out on a timeline. Okay, when do I get the first $100? When do I get the second $100? When do I get the $10,000? How far in the future does that occur? The investor will then identify their other options in the market. On average, what could I invest in instead, and what would the return on that investment be? Now, here's where the, the math ends up coming in, is the investor does what's called discount the future cash flows. So it's got those fake cash flows, it's got them laid out on timeline, and now the investor is going to say, how much money would I invest in my alternative today? to get that same cash flow in the future. And whatever that amount of money is that the investor could alternatively put somewhere else to get that same cash flow, that is what they're going to value your bond at. Not what the face value says. Not what you say you're going to pay. They're going to value at the amount of money it would take them to invest in the alternate investment to get the exact same series of future cash flows, the exact same value, okay? And as a result of that, you may or may not get the amount of money that your bond is, is essentially asking for. So I said I'm not going through the math in, in, in this video because I'm trying to keep this video kind of introductory and high level, so I won't go through the math on that. Um, what I will tell you is, is typically what you'll see to, to kind of assist with this process is instead of making all investors go through this mathematical exercise on their own, bonds will receive a quote, and that quote will essentially tell investors what is the market value of that bond. And so quotes are basically a percentage of the bond's face value. Um, and so, for example, if, again, we have our... $10,000 bond, right? If that bond is quoted at 100, 
That means 100% of face value. So quote is here. That means 100% of face value. That means the cash received from investors or the market value, they're one and the same, will be $10,000. So when you're quoted at 100, 100% of face value, that means your bond is just as attractive in the open market as any other investment. And so investors are willing to give you what you're asking for. They're willing to give you the face value of the bond. For this $10,000 bond, if your quote had only been 90, that means you're only getting 90% of face value. In other words, the market value or the cash you're going to receive from investors is only $9,000. Now, you're still on the hook to pay those investors back $10,000 when the bond matures, but you're only getting $9,000 now. So right out the gate, you're losing $1,000. You're giving the investor $1,000. And the reason that's happening is because your bond must be less attractive than the alternatives. The investor could take that $10,000, put it in something else, and get a better return. So what is the investor willing to give you in order to equal out against that market alternative? Well, they're willing to give you, in this case, $9,000. Or you might see a quote, say, of $110,000. 110 means the investors are actually willing to overpay you. $11,000. You're getting 10% more than what your bond is asking for. Now, why in the world would this happen? Well, take a look. Investors are going to give you $11,000. You're still only going to pay them back ten. dollars So this is the opposite situation. This is a gain for you. You're making more money than you asked for. And you only have to pay back the original amount you asked for. Investors are taking a $1,000 loss right at the moment they lend you money. But why would they do this? Well, remember, between the time that investors lend you that money and the time you ultimately pay them back, you are paying them interest. And so what's probably happening here is your interest that you're paying out on this bond is higher than what investors could get from investing in a market alternative. That makes your bond more attractive it means investors are willing to give you a little extra now to get that higher interest rate relative to taking a lower interest rate from an alternative investment. Now, this is the example I put together. I've kind of summed all this up in this table here that you can kind of take your time, maybe even pause the video, read through it. But basically, it says everything we just went through. Um, notice I have the stated rate, the cash you receive, and the quote that would be associated with it. If we look at this face value column, you see, when your stated interest rate on the bond equals what the investor can get in the market, then what's going to happen is the cash you receive is going to be the face value that you asked for, and your quote will be 100%. That's this middle column, middle, middle row that we did down here. If you're in a discount situation, that must mean that your interest rate on the bond is paying less than the investor could get in a market alternative, makes your bond less attractive which means you have to entice the investor by giving them more up front. So investors are going to give you less cash now, but you still have to pay them back the full amount later. This quote will come in at less than 100. So that's this kind of top row that we created at the bottom. And then you've got this premium situation where you are paying higher interest than the investor's alternative market option. That means investors are willing to give you more money now and the quote will be greater than 100 because you're getting over 100% of value. That's this option that we did down here in the bottom row. And, and that's keeping it simple. If you don't ever do time value of money calculations, you never discount the cash flows yourself, you can look at simply what is the bond quote, and you can apply that as a percentage of face value. And that will tell you what is the bond actually worth and whether or not that bond is then a discount bond where it's worth less than it pays a face value or par value is an alternative word bond where it is worth exactly what it pays or a premium bond where it's actually worth more than what it ultimately pays. All right, there is your high level introductory overview to bonds payable. There's a lot more nuance that goes into bonds, but this was just to kind of get you on board and, and hopefully help your understanding of what is a bond, what can you expect from it, what makes it so unique relative to other ways of borrowing with that uniqueness being it's traded in the open market and therefore its value fluctuates with economic forces and market alternatives. All right, with that said, I hope you found this helpful. I hope you join me for another video.